The pandemic has certainly taken up a significant amount of time during this term of council. I've heard a number of municipalities and municipal councils say they'd love the opportunity for a do-over. Indeed, the demand for a quick response did divert resources from municipal activities. However, we still have accomplished a very significant amount of projects and initiatives in support of our corporate strategic plan. It is a direct result of Council's commitment to a plan for this term that we are able to report back tonight on how well we have done. There is no need for a do-over. This is something that we should be collectively be very proud of. As you know, our corporate strategic plan summarizes the Township's vision, mission and values. It also outlines six overarching themes strong transportation connections, support for business and employment opportunities for residents, strategic responsible growth, local attractions, community health and safety, and efficient fiscally responsible operations. Each theme is broken down into prioritized initiatives that will help to advance our community over the next 10 years. You have directed staff to focus on a total of 25 initiatives, although in many cases, and you will see this shortly, we have gone over and above that expectation. There will be a lot more detail on the biannual update reports that come to Council and are on the website. In Theme 1, our ongoing priorities are all about working with neighbouring municipalities to advocate for the escarpment crossing and investigating a Highway 20 bypass. West Lincoln has continuously advocated for the North-South escarpment crossing, teaming with the Region, Grimsby and Lincoln for five separate joint joint delegations with Caroline Mulrooney, Minister of Transportation, at the AMO and Roma conferences. These delegations focused on the Greater Golden Horseshoe 2051 Transportation Plan, requesting that it include the North-South Escarpment Crossing as a priority to ensure a coordinated approach between Niagara and the province on this critical infrastructure, and the region has approved funds to initiate the individual environmental assessment, and this has already commenced. In connection with the Urban Expansion Group, the Landowners Group and the Master Community Plan team have jointly continued to explore the relocation of the bypass in the southwest of Smithville to a northerly location. The technical advisory team and the steering committee meetings have occurred specifically to discuss transportation linkages including the Niagara Escarpment Commission and the Smithville bypass. Our short-term initiative is to complete a roads needs study and to set targets for the maintenance, rehabilitation and improvement of township roads. The roads needs study was finalized in September 2020. The information and recommendations were considered and included in the township's 2021 and 2022 capital budgets and forecasts. In line with this, the following roads projects have been addressed. In addition to the replacement of Bridge 34, we have rehabilitated Dockstadter Bridge at South Chippewa Road and the North Creek Bridge at Patterson Road. In 2020, parts of Concession 2 and 7, along with a section of 16 Road, were rehabilitated. In 2021, the rehabilitations of sections of Elko Road, South Grimsby Road 10, Beaver Creek Crescent, and Fieldstone Drive, and the hard topping of Concession 5 were completed. In 2022, the road's rehabilitation contract was awarded in April, and it includes sections of South Grimsby Road 18, Abington Road, Concession 4 Road, and Chippewa, South Chippewa Road. The Brock Street water main replacement and road construction has been completed. The St. Ads Roads Reconstruction Project has commenced with the Municipal Class Environmental Assessment Study and Preliminary Design, and all study work will, be, will carry on with the road construction plan for 2025. Township staff also requested that the region consider the upload of approximately 20 kilometers of local roads that service a regional function, and we are awaiting a response. Historically, the Township completed a roads needs study approximately every five years. As part of the 2022 budget, Council approved a service delivery request to complete an annual update of our pavement management system. Moving forward, we'd like to update the pavement service condition ratings for one-third of the road network every year. Our medium-term initiative is to build safe, active transportation networks including sidewalks, bike paths and trails. The Brock Street Water Main and Road Construction Project included the replacement of existing sidewalks to improve pedestrian safety. A new school crossing and pedestrian crossover was installed by the region at Wade Road and West Street. This crossing is staffed by a crossing guard. The East Smithville Secondary Plan was approved without appeal and include concepts for trails and bike paths. Developers who submitted the Dunlow Plan subdivision applications are working on engineering designs that include trails and linkages. Township staff have also notified the region that we are interested in the regional lagoon lands as part of a future trails and corridors plan. Also related to our theme of transportation, 
In 2020, the Niagara On Demand Transit added strategic transportation points on the map for West Lincoln at Leisureplex, the West Lincoln Community Centre and Town Hall. And in 2022, Town Council voted in favour of consolidated public transit helping Niagara secure the triple majority support required to move forward with creating the long-awaited Consolidated Transit Commission. In theme two, our ongoing priority talks about streamlining township processes for building and development. We have partnered with Pelham, Port Colborne and Waynefleet to undertake a review of building services. We've significantly reduced timelines for the development review process by having Public Works staff complete in-house reviews of engineering submissions rather than sending them out for a third-party peer review. We've created a streamlined part lot control process, made improvements to streamline the site alteration process and introduced pre-consultation fee that now allows developers and applicants a more thorough pre-consultation review. We've introduced a signed bylaw and subsequently streamlined the variance process for exceptions. In the summer of 2020, we streamlined patio approval restrictions. We introduced AMPS for enforcement of various non-parking municipal bylaws, therefore assisting with effective enforcement and decreasing our POA files. Staff has become very efficient preparing and processing consent and minor variance applications and have already made decisions on 19 applications, which is on track to be another record-breaking number of applications. Our short-term initiative talks about attracting new industry, leveraging the industrial park and other potential employment lands. To do this, we have added new water main infrastructure in the industrial park area in 2020. Council approved the refreshed economic development plan in February 2020 and council and township staff took basic training on the importance of economic development. Expedited site plan approvals have been granted for four sites within the industrial park. We've recommended a Fulton Rural Employment Park and carried out lot cre creation for Manchester Pet Supplies, Home Hardware and Post Time Services lot enlargements. The Urban Boundary Expansion Work for our Master Community Plan team is addressing all Master Servicing Plans, Employment Lands, Community Service Lands and Transportation Linkages. The expansion of the Smithville Industrial Park is also a focus for growth. Further planning work will identify sectors to target for growth. Meanwhile, staff are working with existing employers who are growing within. Our medium-term initiatives are to advocate for increased investment in rural broadband, to inv investigate the installation of water and sewer services on employment lands, and to explore new incentives in the downtown core to attract new commercial activity. To do this, we provided letters of support for ISP seeking funding for the rural broadband initiatives. Staff have had discussions with another cell tower provider about a potential new tower in Ward 1 along Rural Road 20. We've continued advocacy with SWIFT and, and that resulted in the announcement of Bell and Kojigo bringing fiber optic cabling to Smithville, Wellenport, Keister and Grassy. And we renegotiated the 20-year Bell Mobility cell tower lease at Station 2. Other actions that weren't specifically indicated but helped to progress theme 2 include we approved the Dog Got It Hot Dog Cart and the Runaway Greek Food Truck. We approved a new building on the Niagara Region Sportsman Club property. Approved the Riverside Oasis Farm Yurts in Wellenport. Supported the expansion of Domain Calis and are helping farmers by facilitating surplus severances and other transactions with farmers and landowners. Several redevelopment initiatives are underway within the downtown core at 197 Griffin Street North along with site plan approvals for 121 and 113 Griffin Street South. Roughly five site plans and site plan amendments have been received to be processed for 2022 so far. And staff is working with businesses for rezoning and minor variances to support business startup and expansion. In theme three, our ongoing priority talks about facilitating growth that builds complete communities, balancing commercial, industrial, and residential sectors. Our ongoing urban expansion project the Smithville Master Community Plan, which commenced in the fall of 2019, focuses on building a complete community. Peer review of development proposals to ensure keeping with the Smithville character and secondary plan for the Northwest Quadrant. Staff worked with Casterville United Church to find an appropriate adaptive reuse to preserve the church building. Staff carried out site alteration approval for Rosemont and Mars Home to keep engineered fill in Smithville. Prepared an urban forest report working with the NPCA and Landcare Niagara. Master servicing planning for the Northwest Quadrant includes draft plan approval for Mars Homes, Thrive, and expanding the types of housing such as back-to-back -back and stacked back-to-back -back units to improve affordability. Staff is re reviewing the sale of surplus lands on McMurtry Lane. 
Our short-term initiative involves encouraging a variety of supportive, appropriate, safe and affordable housing options for the community. St. Martin and College Street school sites were granted final approval without appeal in October 2020. These were township-led community planning processes to define the needs of the community in terms of density and housing form. The East Smithville Secondary Plan continues to be part of an extensive consultation with the development community. This plan explores the best means by which to develop the lands to the east of the Industrial Park Road. Staff continue to track available lot inventory and building permit statistics to ensure an available supply of residential lots at all times for future growth. Further garden suite approvals were granted. And final approval was granted to the Spring Creek Manor, Ellis Lots and Bosher Sunset Acres to assist with our housing supply. The review of the Spring Creek Heights Secondary Plan saw a public consultation to ensure a proper policy framework. Staff have, have approved the Mars Homes Draft Plan of Subdivisions, the Mars Homes and Greek Association OPA and Zoning Bylaw Amendments, Peter Budd Developments Draft Plan of Subdivisions, the Garrow Estates Lot Creation in St. Anne's, and has extended draft plan approval for 167 St. Catherine Street and approved street naming of the internal street. A policy was developed for EA planning approval processes and road street openings. Consultants were hired to complete the Rural Employment Review and review the regional official plan work. Our green energy and renew renewable energy policies for future development opportunities were also finalized. An upkeeping housekeeping amendment to the zoning bylaw will, will review the residential zone regulations to keep up to date with evolving housing options. In theme 4, our ongoing priority is for our West Lincoln Community Centre and support programming relevant to the community's needs. The COVID-19 pandemic significantly impacted the implementation of new programming at our new community centre and public library branches. Staff persevered and pivoted to the successful delivery of creative new virtual contests and lockdown challenges and modified programs such as a family day virtual magic show, Easter take home kits and virtual scavenger hunt, a March break camp with daily virtual activities, a Niagara wide joint virtual Canada Day celebration and Canada Day take-home kits. Niagara Region Public Health utilized the gymnasium space in the community center for a COVID-19 vaccination site during 2021. Staff worked hard to pivot and incorporate all required safety measures and when facilities were permitted to open, they executed a number of widely successful community events and initiatives including Harvest Roots, Summer Camp, Fitness Programs, Drop-In Programs, a Sports Ball Partnership, Successful seniors community grant programs such as Tai Chi, Gentle Yoga, Games and Crafts Workshops. A new series of community events in partnership with the libra library are underway to commemorate the 2022 as the year of the garden. We had an incredible candidate festival including vendors, fun zones, interactive entertainment, a magic show, a fire show, a musical performance by Eric Ethbridge, and a spectacular fireworks display and the West Lincoln Leg of the Torch Relay in partnership with the Niagara 2022 Canada Summer Games, which tied into the return of the Music in the Park event also occurred. Library staff was also quick to adjust incorporating virtual aspects into their programming such as health and diet workshops, book and author presentations, book clubs, and crafting and knitting groups, etc. In-house programming resumed at all library branches once permitted following all the COVID-19 pro safety protocols. Upcoming events include Canada Games 13 for 13 event, Movies in the Park, and the return of Harvest Roots. And while Mike Holmes and his company was in town rebuilding Fort Smithville facility, the township provided free space to Fort so that the program could continue without a break. Our short-term initiatives focus on improving local parks and trails and exploring new opportunities for programming and sports events and reinvigorating community halls, particularly in Wellenport and in Caister. 2020, the Smithville Square Parquet was completed, providing a gathering place for residents and visitors in the downtown core. A bike fix-it station was donated by the St. Martin School and installed in the Smithville Square Parquet in 2021. Trails and parks were included in all new development reports and staff is continuously looking at new trails to expand the walkability of Smithville through development applications. A new playground is installed at the Casterville Library and there's a new band shell located at the West Lincoln Community Centre and musical performances have commenced during the West Lincoln Farmers Market and will continue with our upcoming Music in the Park events. 
1,500 trees of eight different varieties were planted in partnership with the Smithville Christian High School, the NPCA, and Landcare Niagara on 1.9 acres of township-owned property north of Anastasia Park. The tree replacement program is now substantially complete with 1,813 trees now planted on West Lincoln's properties that were impacted by the wind project. And an, an additional lot of trees is being held until the fall season due to the current dry conditions. The final impending planting will bring the grand total of more than 2,050 trees planted. The 2022 capital budget includes improvements to the, both the Wellenport and the Caster Community Centers. $20,000 for HVAC at the Wellenport Hall and $40,000 for the new septic system at the Caster Community Center. The cemetery and hall boards received grants totaling $15,500 to help with repairs, maintenance and equipment. Our medium term initiative was to establish a farmer's market. In 2021, we received red funding to kickstart a two-year farmer's market pilot project quickly hired our experienced farmers market coordinator and were able to launch the West Lincoln's farmers market in 2021 delivering 12 weeks of fr Friday markets plus a winter market. We held a special Easter market this year and our regular Friday weekly farmers markets returned for the 2022 season in May. In theme 5 our short-term initiatives are to build a new fire station number 2, collaborate to ensure the redevelopment of the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital and updating the public works building and yard. Tender for the new Fire Station 2 has been completed and Council approved and awarded the construction contract to Nikon Construction. Just last month, we held a ceremony to celebrate the official groundbreaking. Effective advocacy by the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital Foundation, Grimsby, Lincoln and West Lincoln resulted in regional approval of funding as part of the local contribution requirement for the new West Lincoln Memorial Hospital. The Township approved a dedicated tax levy to ensure the Township funding targets towards the hospital are met. And on April 29th of this year, the ground was officially broken for the construction of the new West Lincoln Memorial Hospital. We were lucky to receive an ISIP grant for improvements to the Public Works Yard. This includes improvements to the HVAC and exhaust system, LED lighting upgrades, new garage bay doors, structural repairs to the interior wash bay walls, new flooring in the office areas, and that work is now complete. Other initiatives that were not specifically directed to do but help with this theme include, I represent the small rural municipalities on the Community Safety and Wellbeing Advisory Committee that the region runs. We are continually working on 911 compliance with our street names. Council approved a speed limit review policy to provide guidance to public works staff undertaking an engineering review of roads to establish whether or not the speed limit is appropriate. With FCM funding, we completed our plan to mitigate the impacts of weather, sometimes called our climate change plan. The corporate green team is, is tasked with ensuring recommendations are implemented. We ensured the careful demolition and removal of the former Caster Baptist Church to ensure community and property safety. We reported to Health Canada on cannabis enforcement issues and proceeded with an injunction on illegal cannabis operations. We are participating in the Emily Project, which is a 911 sign blade initiative for vacant farmland. We are carrying out environmental monitoring of the former Caysterville gas station, working with Stanpac and community members to address the ongoing noise complaint, and working with community groups and the NPCA on invasive species cleanup in the Welland River. Our medium term initiative is all about improving pedestrian safety. Staff has significantly conducted traffic studies and implemented many improvements on West Lincoln roads and intersections to address safety concerns, including a four-way stop at Industrial Park Road and Spring Creek Road, a two-way stop on Georgia Caucus Drive was moved to Oakville Boulevard, sidewalk repairs on John Street and a new sidewalk connecting to the Caysterville Library where it was installed. There's a new no parking zone on the south side of Gateway Avenue between Creekview Drive and South Grimsby Road 6 and parking restrictions on Culver Street by the Smithville Public School. Also there's a new plan designated pedestrian crossing near Dennis Drive to cross the regional road 20. Conditions of approval have been assigned on, on subdivision developments requiring new off-road trails and on-street traffic calming measures. Staff continue to work with the Niagara Region to establish pedestrian crossings on regional roads to provide a safer and more walkable downtown core. Our long-term initiative under this theme is to advocate for a physician recruitment strategy. Included within the Hamilton Health Sciences Plan for the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital is a strategy to recruit physicians. The township continues to actively support these plans.
And theme six, our ongoing priority is to complete an asset management plan prioritizing investments and balancing service levels with fiscal sustainability. In 2020, a GIS asset management coordinator was hired. A risk framework assessment was completed for all asset categories and the development of a life cycle activity and level of service framework began. By the end of 2021, the asset management database and our GIS systems were updated with sidewalks and bridges and accurate roads, parks and sanitary sewer data. The asset management plan has now been completed, meeting the July 1st, 2022 requirement. An additional ongoing priority presented itself due to COVID-19 and that was the business continuity planning activities during the pandemic. I've already spoken about how staff has had to pivot and adapt to new requirements and safety protocols at our facilities along with the events and programs that were modified. There are many other undertakings that staff have accomplished throughout the pandemic to ensure the continued service to our residents. These are definitely worth mentioning as well. We have new secure work from home technology. We've implemented and adjusted safety measures, screening signage and, ad and additional screening personnel. Policies and bylaws are in place for mask wearing, policies for staff and public electronic meetings, public participation in electronic meetings, confidential matters held by Zoom, switching to hybrid meetings, and a mandatory COVID-19 vaccination policy. We changed the procedural bylaw to allow electronic council and committee meetings. And we're now live streaming meetings. Our short-term initiatives focus on modernizing service delivery through new software and programs and investigating improved branding, increasing communication with residents and promoting local activities, attractions, and events. Through our new website, which was launched in 2020, the public can make requests, submit information, and report, report concerns online. An acknowledgement statement was created and updated to be read at the beginning of each council and standing committee meeting. An Indigenous engagement page was added to the township website. A new website was also developed by the parade committee following the cancellation of the Christmas parade in 2020. The website helped to promote new and returning events and made it easier to complete and submit the necessary forms for participation. We have new interactive mapping, which provides public access to the township GIS data. New budget software was implemented in 2020 and was utilized in the preparation of the 2021 and 2022 budgets, which include the release of the open book on the township website. And this is a place where pu the public can easily understand our budget. We have online timesheet entry, which is implemented to streamline payroll processing. The West Lincoln Public Library implemented Evergreen to allow streamlined access to the library catalog and facilities partnered with LINK. The annual meeting management process was replaced with eScribe. A new information and privacy policy was created. The practice of water shutoffs was discontinued and the water arrears collection process was streamlined. Planning, committee of adjustment and building permit fees were reviewed and increased to cover the operating costs. We are in the process of implementing Interact e-transfer payment services for non-water, non-tax payments. A new bylaw was adopted to regulate open air fires and a new easy online permit application process is on the website. The finance department was approved for a provincial grant for its digital modernization project. And to date, this has resulted in the implementation of Caseware software, which automates the preparation of the annual financial statements and the installation and implementation of cloud-based water meter reading software. Staff is working on eSend features and the Virtual City Hall portal, which has a target launch date of September 2022. Our Information Technology Department has issued an RFP for a new phone system and are in the process of taking the steps to recommend and implement a new system. Improvements have also been made to key finance communication tools, namely the creation of a budget informational video, a budget survey, and updates to the tax bill and water bill inserts. These updates provide key information in an easier to understand format. Internet voting is being implemented for the upcoming 2022 municipal election. A disconnecting from work policy has been recreated as required by the province. The township social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram have seen consistent branding and increased communication. Greater productivity has resulted in increased public engagement. When compared to the last five months of 2021, the beginning of 22 has seen more information and content shared with the public. The number of posts is up by 17%. Our following is growing with 22, 2022 so far seeing a 27% increase in followers. 
And finally, our content is reaching more people. Our post reach is up by 21%. Thanks to the implementation of live streaming, the updated information on the Township website and the consistent promotion of meetings on social media, the Township's YouTube channel has seen a 228% increase in views. Our other inefficiencies include, I represent the Township on the Regional Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities Working Group. We have made an adjustment to our septic permit fees. We have a new corporate flag policy with a streamlined flag raising request process. We've updated all our non-union job descriptions. We've introduced budget and tracking system and regular reporting requirements. We've enhanced security through firewall replacement. We've renewed our agreement with the Niagara Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and Humane Society. We were audited to ensure compliance under the AODA Act, and this includes updates to the Township's accessibility webpage. We have a new Council Remuneration Bylaw and Council Expense Policy. More than 30 proposed planning and building applications so far in 2022. We've had 84 bylaw complaints so far in 2022, and we've increased our planning and building fees to help cover costs on the user pay basis. Our long-term initiatives talk about streamlining customer service to ensure response resolution and the exploration of systems and approaches to scale to service delivery as the community grows. New online forms have been implemented across all township departments. We've been able to increase our staffing in many areas thanks to council's approval to tackle increased demands. A part-time position in the finance department was re replaced with a full-time position. We added a third water and wastewater operator. We have a new GIS asset management coordinator. We have a new communications specialist. We are able to hire an, an elections assistant and an HR generalist will be hired in the fall. In addition, we were able to extend our IT with the addition of a new part-time IT position. The township's refreshment cart licensing bylaw was amended, delegating authority to the clerk to approve licenses. Overnight parking enforcement was modernized to snow events and advisories. The alignment of the AMPS hearing officer with all the other municipalities provides efficiencies. The planning department reorganization is being considered and will be part of a staff report to committee with a proposed partnership with the landowners group. As you've just heard in great detail, I'm really proud to report that we've made excellent progress on all the initiatives and the many projects that we've completed. So what's next? So I know that that was a lot of information and I appreciate your patience. It was a lot of work and you should be really, really proud of, of the fact that you committed to the corporate plan and, and carried through with the corporate plan and, and it really helped us stay focused. So while we, we worked through the pandemic, we've certainly developed a lot of skills that are gonna help us respond to any emergency or issue that may come upon us. But on top of that, we're gonna continue to keep working this plan and with the new council in place, we're going to update the plan and keep making things happen in support of the community the residents and the businesses of West Lincoln.